So the way that patients use drugs, people use drugs, is they're trying to control their, what they feel. So sometimes they'll use alcohol for a certain mood and then they'll use cocaine for another mood. So when you talk to patients, the poly substance users, they're using the drugs to really regulate how they feel. So they'll take cocaine, it'll give them a high, it'll, give, it'll be too active for them. Then they'll modulate that with alcohol. And then the alcohols might maybe a little too much for them, they might give themselves some marijuana. So it's very logical of how people use drugs. And what they're really doing is they're mo modifying their neurotransmitters. So if you talk to them and you're really trying to heal them, that's what you need to do is figure out what are they trying to um, modulate. Addiction is very much like functional medicine. This is from conventional care. This is NIDA, National Institute of Drug Addiction. This is their chart. And it's very much like what you would see a functional medicine chart would look like. They're saying that biology and genes plus the environment affects the patient, their drug of choice, and the drug affects the brain, and the changes in the brain leads to addiction. So it's a very comprehensive model that they have there. What are the brain mechanisms that affect addiction? So drugs alter the way people think, feel, and behave by disrupting neurotransmission. We'll talk in detail about that. So what happens is it affects the communication between the nerve cells in the brain. And this is a direct quote from NIDA. Many scientific studies conducted over decades have established that drug dependence and addiction are features of an organic brain disorder caused by the drug's effect on neurotransmission. So they're now calling drug addiction a brain-based disorder. So before, you know, people were talking about willpower, they've changed over the last 20 years to sort of say it's a brain-based disorder. So I will talk to you in detail about what those sentences mean. So here you have two nerve cells. The way nerve cells communicate is is through secreting neurotransmitters. There is a gap between the nerve cells called the synapse. So you need to have the neurotransmitter, which are products that are made by the sending cell. You can see a signal is coming down by the electric, the electricity, that, that's a signal that's coming down. And that causes release of the neurotransmitter from the vesicles. Once the neurotransmitter is released, it docks on to the receive to the receptor of the receiving cell that propagates the signal. So that is a very important thing that we have to keep in mind because this is what neurotransmission is. This is what is being affected by drugs, by medication, by anything that changes the way our brains function. So ultimately it's about neurotransmission. So here you have different neurotransmitters. There are hundreds of neurotransmitters. These are the most common ones. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that gives us the high. It's the reward neurotransmitter. It gives us the motivation to get up. It, um, they say pleasure neurotransmitter because it gives the high. Serotonin is, uh, is our mood neurotransmitter. And some of these endorphins are for pain. So each neurotransmitter carries a different message. When you drink alcohol, it affects the GABA system, for instance, or the serotonin system, or the glutamate system. So each drug affects different neurotransmitters, affects neurotransmission, so you have different signals in the brain. And ultimately, if it affects the dopamine, which, which is your pleasure neurotransmitter, it also affects behavior. So the way that patients use drugs, people use drugs, is they're trying to control their, what they feel. So sometimes they'll use alcohol for a certain mood, and then they'll use cocaine for another mood. This is another very important slide. This is what happens at the neurotransmitter level at the synapse. So this is for someone who's using cocaine. This is normal neurotransmission. We saw that earlier slide. So you have the signal coming down. The vesicle uh, puts out these bubbles, these orange balls, which are dopamine neurotransmitters. So the dopamine gets 
out from the vesicle when this nerve gets the signal then it docks onto this receptor the orange glow means that it's now ready to propagate the signal some of the dopamine is degraded in the synapse sort of eaten up in the synapse and some of it goes back to the sending cell so different things can happen to the neurotransmitter now what happens when the patient takes cocaine here you have cocaine as the green ball the patient is taking cocaine it blocks the uptake the reuptake of the dopamine so in effect you have a lot of dopamine in the synapse so you have two and a half glows, orange glows, meaning that's how much signaling you have. So what do you how do you think the patient is feeling here with so much signaling? The patient is getting a high. This is, they're having a lot of signal, they feel good. Or if it doesn't get degraded, what happens? As long as it's there, it's going to keep sending, it's going to ping, it's going to give you signals and signals and signals. Exactly. So it just keeps, the high keeps lasting. Lasting, keeps right, exactly, because you're getting the pinging. But that only happens initially. So what happens after a certain period of time, the brain doesn't like so much signaling. It's like, no, 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 this is too much for me. I, I can't deal with so much. So what it does is it, has, it makes less receptors. Here you can see you have five receptors here. You know, five, one, two, three, four, five. The brain now makes less receptors. It doesn't want enough, so much signaling. Now you have only two receptors. So the patient's still taking cocaine. Right? And the brain also makes less dopamine. Now here there were four balls, four dopamine molecules. There you only have two. So what do you think the patient feels there in signal in uh, number three? Withdrawals? No, patient. not withdrawals yet. The patient will tell you I feel normal. I'm taking the drug but I only feel normal. Tolerance. Tolerance is happening. They have less dopamine, they have less receptors, but they feel normal. They're not getting a high. So these are the patients who will come to you and you're like, you're using, you're still using, why are you using? Not every patient will tell you this. You really have to ask them and they'll tell you, well, they'll say I'm using it to get high, but you really have to ask them because even they don't know that they are not getting a high from it anymore. They're just using it so that they prevent number four. So when they stop using cocaine, which are the green balls, what happens to them? How do you think they feel? Right, because they don't have any of the orange signals, right? At least in number three, they had one orange, yellow orange glow. In number four, they don't have any propagation of signal. They are feeling terrible. They just, they can't move basically. They're in withdrawals, they're having craving. They don't have any dopamine, so every dopamine effect is gone. So when we're asking them to be abstinent, think about how impossible it is for them to be abstinent. It's really not fair, you know, we're telling them have willpower and the family's putting pressure on them, telling them that they're going to be kicked out of the house or whatever other consequences there are. But, all, but they're saying, I, I can't, I can't even live. They'll tell you, I've worked in a lot of treatment centers, so they'll tell you I can't wake up in the morning, I can't get up and go. And that's what's happening. So what they do is once they get there, if they don't have enough treatment, they go to number three. They just use enough that they don't get high. They don't want the high anymore. They've lost, the vast majority of people have lost the pleasure. There's some who do, but the vast majority don't want to go back to number two. They haven't been in number two for a long time. They just want to avoid number four and be in number three. So this is the whole mechanism. If you understand this, you will stop blaming people for not being able to say no, because they can't. They just want to feel normal. So even patients don't understand this actually. So they blame themselves, society blames them. And if you want to know what that looks like, so this is another kind of scan called a PET scan, and you're looking at the dopamine receptors. So the signal here is in orange and red. So you can see in the control normal patient, you have a lot of these red signals. That means there are a lot of receptors there. The patient is feeling normal, it's, you know, everything's going well for that patient. Here you have a patient who has an addiction. They've been using cocaine, methamphetamines, alcohol or heroin. You can see there are no receptors there, right? So it's just, they're not gonna feel good. There's nothing you can do to make them feel any better unless we, give them back these receptors, give them back the ability to make the dopamine.